And the most specific test to check for pregnancy is the HCG level, which is done in the blood. Now, if you get a negative urine pregnancy test, that's not always very reliable because sometimes you could be pregnant, but we need to keep on repeating your HCG levels. And the beauty about the HCG level is it... So if you haven't got your period 16 days post-ovulation, we would suggest you do a test. And you can start seeing the baby on the ultrasound scan. The HCG level doesn't provide any more useful information. Hi, I'm Dr. Malpani. I'm an IVF specialist. And I'm going to talk to you about a very important blood test which we do to find out whether you're pregnant or not. This blood test is called HCG or beta HCG. And the full form for that is quite a mouthful. It stands for human coronary gonadotrophin. You don't really have to worry about the full form or how it's derived or anything else. All you need to understand is HCG is a hormone which is found in the blood. And the beauty about this is it's a hormone which is very, very specific to pregnancy. So if your HCG levels are negative, and a negative level is anything less than 10, if your HCG level is less than 10, it means you're not pregnant. So obviously, if you're trying to get pregnant and the beta HCG is less than 10, which means you missed a period, you've gone to the doctor, the doctor does a test and it's negative, or you've done an IVF cycle and you're waiting to find out if you're pregnant or not, and the HCG is negative, of course, that causes major heartburn. But that's what it is. That's the reality. The beauty about the HCG blood test is it's a very sensitive hormone, which means the HCG becomes positive very, very quickly. The first test to find out, the most sensitive and the most specific test to check for pregnancy is the HCG level, which is done in the blood. Now, of course, not everyone necessarily does a blood test. A much simpler pregnancy test is the urine pregnancy test. These are urine pregnancy test kits, what are called HPTs, and their quality has improved dramatically in the last few years which means even if your blood tests are as low as 50 milli international units per ml of HCG, the urine pregnancy test these days will be positive. Now, if you get a negative urine pregnancy test, that's not always very reliable because sometimes you could be pregnant, but the levels of HCG are so low that they don't appear in the urine or you've not done the test properly. But if the urine pregnancy test is positive, then you can be pretty confident that you are pregnant. Now, it's okay for patients to be confident and not confident, but IVF experts can't make a mistake, which is why we have to do a blood test, which is why we always insist on a blood test called a beta HCG. We can't rely on urine pregnancy tests. One huge advantage of the HCG is it gives us a number. A UPT only gives us, are you positive or negative? And that's it. Whereas you don't just want to find out if you're pregnant or not. You want to find out whether the pregnancy is healthy or not. And in order to determine that, we need to keep on repeating your HCG levels. And the beauty about the HCG level is it roughly doubles every two to three days. So once you do the level, let's say you've done it on Monday and it's 100, when you repeat it again after three days, it increases exponentially, which means by Thursday, we expect it to be something about 200 or 300. This is all valuable information. And there are actually charts available. And you can see these charts on our website called www.drmalpani.com to help you make sense of your HCG levels. What is the baseline which we use? It's not necessarily your last menstrual period. It's got to be your DPO. So it's not the LMP or the last menstrual period. It's the days post ovulation. That might sound a little confusing. So let me explain to you. The day you get your period is whichever day it is. Now, after you get your period, there is a phase called a follicular phase when you ovulate, and then you get your next period. After you ovulate, the next phase is called the luteal phase. That's usually fixed. That's always 14 days. Therefore, after ovulation, you should get a period 14 days after ovulation, which means 14 days post-ovulation or 14 BPO, you should get your period. So if you haven't got your period 16 days post-ovulation, we would suggest you do a test. And a blood test for about... 14 days post-ovulation when you're pregnant or is positive is something like about 50 or 100 milli international units per ml. It could be higher. You must understand that it's not just 15 or 20. 15 or 20 technically could be considered to be a positive test, but typically the levels are much higher. What we want to see is usually about the 100 range. And it's not just a single blood test we tell you anything about. We ask you to repeat it because we need to know is it increasing well or not. All this is valuable information and sometimes it can get a little complicated and confusing. And that's the reason why so much of this information is available online on our website where you can always refer to. You must understand that the follicular phase can vary a lot. But because the luteal phase is always constant, 
the most important marker in a menstrual cycle is the day of ovulation. So you could know your date of ovulation either because you're doing follicular tracking or because you're using ovulation prediction kits or the doctor did IVF, in which case obviously the date of ovulation is the date of the pickup. That's pretty obvious. Now, when you start doing your beta HCG and your blood tests, as long as they're increasing, that's reassuring. If they don't increase, that's bad news, which means you could get a positive test and then that could decline. And that's called a chemical pregnancy, which is like an early miscarriage. Or it could increase and then increase and then increase and then decline, which is a miscarriage. The important thing is that once your beta HCG is increasing and it crosses 1000, which is called the threshold level, you should do a vaginal ultrasound scan to find out A, whether the pregnancy is in the uterus or not, and whether the pregnancy is healthy or not. So if your beta HCG is positive, means you're pregnant. But we still can't say where the pregnancy is. So it's called a PUL or a pregnancy of unspecified location. Yes, you're pregnant, but we don't know anything else. Therefore, you repeat the tests. If they're increasing, that's reassuring. And once you do an ultrasound, you can see the pregnancy sac in the uterus, which is reassuring, which means now we know you have an intrauterine pregnancy. It's in the uterus. Great. If it's not in the uterus, that's bad news, which means your beta HCG is more than 1,000, but the doctor cannot see a pregnancy sac on the vaginal ultrasound scan in the uterus. That means the pregnancy sac is outside the uterus. That's called an ectopic or a tubal pregnancy, which means you're pregnant, but not in the right place. And that could be a life-threatening complication when the doctor then needs to kill that pregnancy with an injection called methotrexate. And the good news is if the doctor makes a diagnosis early, it's very easy to kill that ectopic pregnancy. You don't require surgery. But that's the sole reason you require so much careful monitoring to make sure whether your pregnancy is in the uterus or not. Because we all know that infertile couples are at increased risk for an ectopic pregnancy. And you don't want to delay that diagnosis. Once your HCG levels have increased and you can start seeing the baby on the ultrasound scan, the HCG level doesn't provide any more useful information. But the most important thing is repeated ultrasound scans to make sure that the pregnancy sac is increasing, that you can see a fetal pole or small baby, which as it becomes bigger, will start seeing a little flickering within the fetus, which is called the cardiac activity. <sighs> and then you can finally smile and say, yes, I am pregnant. Because once you see a beating heart on the vaginal ultrasound scan, the risk of something going wrong can be extremely low. If you want more information about how to interpret your HCG levels, please come to www.drmalpani.com. We've got tons of information for you, all written for infertile couples. No jargon, updated, reliable, because I've written it. And if you have more questions, send me an email through our website. And I do hope this information helps you to have a baby, because that's the reason I became an IVF specialist, to help infertile couples to complete the family. See you at www.drmalpani.com.